Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be showing how to create a three-piece mold in SOLIDWORKS. While the existing mold commands in SOLIDWORKS are very convenient and fast to use, one major limitation with the tooling split command is that it can only produce two individual mold bodies, a core side and a cavity side. There is a command called the core command that can split this further into individual bodies, but this is really geared towards making lifters, core pins, and side cores and not for making three equally sized pieces of mold tooling. So I'm gonna show some alternative methods we can do here. And the first method actually starts by just making a mold using those built-in mold commands in SOLIDWORKS. As an example, I'm just making a mold for this box part. The box also has an attached runner down below, shown here in red. And the two halves of the mold are currently shown in green and blue. What I would like to do for this mold is to split the blue piece of mold tooling into two individual bodies, therefore giving me three total bodies of mold tooling. To do this, I'm going to create an offset surface. I'm going to offset the surface from the bottom face of the box. I'm going to offset that by five millimeters. This will be the location where I'd like to cut my mold. Once I have that surface made, I need to extend it. I'm going to extend the surface and the exact value I extend the surface is not really important. The important part is that I extend the surface so that it fully intersects the mold tooling. So I can click on OK to extend that surface. And now that I have this surface extended, I can use it to split my mold tooling by going to insert, Features, Split, selecting the templates that I would like to use, and then selecting the body that I would like to split, in this case the lower half of the mold, and clicking Cut Bodies. Then I can check these boxes to keep both halves of that mold tooling, and then click on OK. That'll split the bodies, and at this point I can hide my surface. And I can reapply any appearances I'd like to those bodies. The result will be three individual bodies that form the mold tooling, as well as the one body that forms the molded part in the center. This is just one method of creating a three-piece mold. This can be extended further to make a four or five-piece mold, and it can also use more complex surfaces than just an offset surface. Next, I'm gonna show a different technique on this same model for how we can create a three-piece mold. For the second method of creating a three-piece mold, I have the same box model here along with its attached runner below. This time we're going to forego the mold tooling command entirely and do this just with our normal surfacing and extrusion commands. What I need to do to begin is create my own parting surfaces. For my first parting surface, I'm going to use a ruled surface command with the perpendicular to vector option. For my vector, I'll choose this face right here, which is my direction of pull. And then I'll choose the outer edges along the outside of the box. And to avoid clicking on them all individually, I can use the option select tangency to automatically select all of those edges. I notice that the preview doesn't automatically appear, and that's because the surface is currently going inwards and causing a build error. To fix this, I can simply select all the edges and then hit alternate direction so the surface comes outwards. I can also give myself a little bit more room to work with here and change that distance at 30 millimeters and then click on OK to create that surface. Next, I want to create another parting surface down below and this will be done similar to the first example where I'm going to offset a surface. So I'm going to use my offset surface command, select the bottom face of the box and offset this by five millimeters. And just like before, I need to extend this surface to give myself more room to work with. So I'll extend this surface and then click on OK. 
I now have two surfaces that represent where I would like to part my mold tooling. And the next step is for me to actually create that mold tooling. So to do this, I'm going to use the extrude command and start a sketch of my extrusion on the top plane. For my mold tooling, this will simply be a rectangle. And I can dimension this so that it goes all the way around my molded part, but it still stays within my surfaces that I've just created. I can go ahead and extrude this. And I can extrude upwards past my part. And I can also extrude it downwards past my part. One advantage with this method compared to the first method is that my extrusion can actually be slightly short of this runner. What this means is that in my final product, this runner will actually penetrate to the surface of the mold tooling as I intend. In the first method, because I'm using the tooling split command, this runner has to be entirely inside the mold tooling. And therefore, to finish that mold, I would have to come in and then create my own cut to open up that runner to the outside. Here, because we're not using the tool and switch command, I can actually leave that runner poking out. One last thing I need to do is uncheck this merge result option. That will keep this new extrusion as a separate body. And then I can click on OK. Now that I've created that block, all I've done is just made a solid block of material. And I need to actually carve out the shape of my molded part into this block. I can do this by going to Insert features, combine, and then using the subtract option, select my block as the main body, and then select that molded part as my body to subtract. I can click on OK. And that will give me one single resulting body. If I change my display style, I can take a look inside my model here and see that there is now a cavity inside that tooling block. One note here, when I use that combine command, that will consume my molded part body. If I would like to keep that molded part body in my final model, I would just simply have to create a copy of that body before I run the combine command. In this case, I'm okay with just the mold tooling and I don't need that molded part body anymore. So to finish up here, what I need to do is take this mold body and cut it into three individual pieces. And this will be done with those two surfaces I created earlier. So I can go to Insert, Features, Split. I can select my templates. I can select the surfaces that I would like to use. And then I can also select the body that I'd like to cut. In this case, there is only one solid body to cut. Then I can check these three boxes to include all three of those bodies. Click on OK. And now I'll use those surfaces to cut this into three individual solid bodies. At this point, I can hide these surfaces as I'm now done with them. And I can apply my appearances to my mold tooling. And then the final result is nearly identical to the first method, of course, with the runner down below punching through to the outside of my mold. So this is just one other method we can use. This can be helpful for more complex models where the basic mold commands included in SOLIDWORKS may not give you the proper result and you want to go straight to a manual surfacing approach. The first option that I showed in this video can be more useful if you've already created the mold and then retroactively need to turn it from a two-piece mold into a three-piece or a four-piece mold. You can just pick up right where you left off with the normal mold tooling commands. Either way, these two methods can help you create three-piece or even four-piece or larger molds in SOLIDWORKS, which you cannot normally do with the included mold commands.